Hello everyone, my name is Cubits, and this is the San Lackey Slim Gunstock for VR, for the Oculus Quest 2, as you can see here. Uh, this one is fully assembled, but assembly doesn't take much time or any tools at all. Uh, I'll just show you, we'll just actually reverse assemble this one, if you will. Alright, so we'll pop that off. This is the basic stock that you get. It is three steel tubes um, with some 3D printed parts joining them together. So we're going to unscrew this one here, we'll just have a look here. All right, so you're gonna get some threaded tube, some threaded steel tube, which comes in a couple of basic parts. And then the rest is just threaded ABS plastic. Uh, I bought this one from San Lackey uh, official shop um, because I wanted to see what quality we were looking at. And it's, you know, it's nice and sort of uh, satiny ABS plastic. You can see the pattern in it. There's a couple of little wobbles here and there, but it's a pretty good pattern. And it's a very, very simple build. So these are the three pieces of steel right here that you're gonna need. Uh, if you do print this yourself, which I think is the intention of this design is, it's so simple um, and has such sort of large gauge pieces. Um, there's no real fine printing work. And then you're just gonna buy three pieces of threaded steel. Uh, two of them appear to be the same length. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop him back together now. All right, this is the front piece here. And then this is the part where the backhand connects. And so we're gonna screw that in. All righty. And then this is the buttstock section. I do actually have a, it does come with a, uh, an extender that goes in here that makes the butt a little bit longer. But frankly, I don't, I don't know of many guns that'll require a butt longer than the one you've got. And I actually wish that it did come a little bit shorter. But I think just for ease of manufacture, these are the same lengths. All right, and then that's our butt plate there, which is dead flat. And you can see that it was just such an easy print to, to pop out. None of these parts are very large. This is the largest single part here. It's like 12 centimeters tall. Even the teeny tiniest little 3D printers could knock this guy out. All right, and then the last piece of the puzzle is these pieces here that are on the controllers, the controller cup. This is by far the nicest part of the uh, of the design. Uh, it's got a really nice sort of geometric simplicity to it. It kind of looks like um, like early 3D poly models from the 90s. This is the left controller one here and each one of these has a magnet in the top. Um, if you buy this from San Lackey there is actually different strength magnets in the top of these controllers. Um, the back hand has more grip so it's trying to keep it a bit more stable and then the front hand's a little bit lighter for an easier release to reload. So these just squeeze in to the controllers and then there's a very little tolerance in this lip around the front here, which means that it isn't gonna rotate once it's connected. Uh, this one does come with some little sticky tabs on it so you can stick it to your ring if you wanna permanently mount it. But because I like jump in and out of different stocks, I've just left the little stickers on. Um, it hasn't affected performance at all. Uh, so then we can uh, connect the rear hand to this one here. And as you can see, because we've got like this, th this 180 degree cutout in here, it does keep this sort of locked rotationally with the buttstock. So that can all line up and doesn't flop around when you've got your front hand disconnected. Uh, the front hand can freely rotate like this. So you could actually do like a, a side grip, a horizontal grip if you wanted to. Um, it, it, does, it can move forwards and backwards as well. So you, you might be able to get away with like a pump shotgun action, but it isn't the smoothest and it will tip off quite easily. Uh, the biggest weakness of this magnet system is that the magnet has no pull resistance. So if you've seen uh, my review on the Boak stock or the Modus or pretty much any stock, something that I actually put a lot of uh, weight into is how, str how strongly you can pull the whole stock into your shoulder because that does generate a bit of stability, especially if you're sniping long distance, you can like squeeze it in and it'll like just solidify your, uh, your aim a little bit. This gun stock has the least shoulder pull I have ever felt in a gun stock. It, it, just, it just tips up like that. Like you cannot pull into the shoulder at all. And because the back plate isn't curved at all, it can't, there's no sort of like vertical stability in that stock. It will just slip up and down. And that isn't so much of a problem if you're shooting a normal rifle, you can pull the front hand off, reload and then reattach and keep firing. And you do have clearance for your headset, even on quite low set uh, sights. So you can get right down here, but you, you, might, you might start bumping into that a little bit. So you probably want to be up here a little bit. 
Um, it doesn't have a cheek rest at all or anything like that. You might be able to like flip this over and fit something on there that'll do it. Um, the biggest weakness I find with this is when using bolt action sniper rifles. That is something I love doing. Um, I have a lot of fun doing big long range snipes and then the really satisfying chink chink of cycling the bolt with the right hand. With this gun stock, it is very difficult because you have to release the back hand and as soon as you do that, you lose all rotational stability because that front hand can rotate and slide backwards. So if you try and pull into your shoulder to stop it from falling over, it actually just slides the front hand backwards until you get all the way to here and then you can sort of stabilize it a bit. But if you pull that, and that'll disconnect and you'll drop the stock if you're not wearing a sling. Um, so I'm just trying to like hold it between my shoulder and my hand and then bringing my front hand up to cycle the bolt is going to shake it and then things will start moving again until I get that hand lock back on there. So if you want to do any sniping, I, I don't recommend this uh, stock. It is particularly weak at bolt action sniper rifles. Um, or doing things like uh, another trick that I usually use is when I'm throwing grenades, I'll disconnect my back hand, reach down, grab my grenade, bring it to my front hand to pull the pin, and then I can throw my grenade. Typically, I can hold the stock, the entire stock, by the front controller, just sort of like tipped up at an angle like this, uh, because there's enough like stiffness in that connection to the front hand. With this, it will just flop over. So you're sort of in that, again, in that weird position where I'm gonna try and throw a grenade, uh, reaching down real careful and then grab it and then take it to my front hand and then uh, uh. Uh, Another big problem with this is the weight um, This is by far the heaviest gun stock that I own um, Because it's made of steel tubes um, to get rid of the or reduce the number of magnets involved It weighs 640 ish grams which makes it about, well, a bulk stock is 180 grams and the Modus is 320 grams. So this weighs twice as much as the Modus V2, which has two front attachment points for magnets, uh, a joint in it to adjust it, and it's just fully adjustable stock. So it's a very heavy stock. And while it might not be heavy for a real gun, uh, in games you do tend to be holding those angles much longer and after like a couple of hours, especially with the back hand just like slipping and you can't pull on the front at all, um, you do feel that weight. It is quite well balanced around the rear hand. Uh, because it has the metal section at the back as well as the front, it does sort of sit on that hand okay. I'm not sure if I'd be, feel too comfortable uh, using a pistol. Uh, like I normally do, which is leaving the rear hand in the stock and then under gripping like this. Um, I might smack myself in the face with this, but the, the rear controller isn't going to fall out too badly. So you might be able to get away with that. Um, but yeah, I think when it comes down to it, if you were 3D printing this stock yourself, if you had no way of shipping a stock to you, um, if you wanted to spend the absolute least amount of money on a stock, and you had a 3D printer, you could justify this stock. But to buy one as a stock and have it shipped to you like I did, it doesn't offer as much as other stocks do for just a, a fraction more money. I think, I think the Modus V2 is about 10 US dollars more than that than this. The, uh, the Boak stock, uh, the Signature, uh, the one I have, is about 10, 15 dollars more again, uh, or more than this one. And they are far more versatile. You can do a lot of stuff with the front hand. You have much more control for bolt action sniper rifles. Um, the Modus is just a super flexible stock and the, and the Boke stock weighs four times less, like, oh, it's less than three times, less than a third of the weight is what I'm trying to say. It's less than a third of the weight of this stock, which is uh, ridiculous. So yeah, I don't know if I'd spend the money on this one. I, I don't like using it um, but we will jump into a game and have a bit of a play around and see how we go all right so as you can see it isn't too bad i'd say the tracking also isn't that bad it does seem to have fairly okay tracking we can tip it over a little bit um, it's starting to drift around a tiny amount, but I should be able to make shots out pretty far. Back ones. Not 
too bad. Range actually a bit shorter than I thought it would be. So we can drop our mag, put a fresh mag in, all of that. It's not too bad for these kind of rifles. There we go. So yeah, shooting range stuff is easy enough. We can actually switch to our pistol and I have enough clearance It's not too bad on the pistol. So that's not so bad. We can switch back to our primary and we're good again. Easy peasy. All right, I love the SV98. Big green meanie. As you can see, like our hands can line up fairly well. Um, the butt lines up fairly well on this one. It's not too bad. We can't pull back. If, if I try and pull into my shoulder to solidify my shot, it does tip the controller out. And we're getting a bit more drift now as well. I'm trying to get some good light. I do have pretty crap light in here because I'm using studio lights. So you might fare better at your place, but... Uh, got it. Losing it. There we go. Rough. I'm hitting the, uh, the con front of the controller because it's got the uh, bit sticking off the ring. It does collide a little bit more than the bottom mounted ones do when you're cycling the bolt. There we go. Uh, let's try one of the fire out ones. Oh, it's drifting. No, nope, went to the left. Oh my god, it's, yeah, it's really brutal to try and... Wow, can't believe that missed. I'm pulling my hand too far forwards, I see. Clipped him. Alright. Man, this is rubbish. I'm doing badly. My hand is too far forwards. There we go, a little bit better. but I'm already feeling the weight of this gun. Just cycle that over the back. There we go. Already feeling the weight of this stock. And it's pretty crazy. If I put the butt of the stock right up on top of my shoulder, it seems to be a little bit more stable, but now the sort of the top part's like hitting me in the ear. Rubbish. Oh. There we go, just disconnect both my hands. Ah. You know what, that'll probably do us. Let's just uh, jump out of this now, shall we? There we go, pop that over there. All right, so that's been a bit of a look at the San Lackey stock, the San Lackey Slim, or Sleek, or whatever it's called. Um, of the two stocks that they make, I would recommend this one over the more expensive one with all the stuff on it, because you can actually get your eye closer to all of the parts. On the other one with bigger plastic shroud, you, you're going to bump your uh, headset on it a lot more often. So this is the pick of the two, but frankly, I, I would say unless you are printing your own and this is the design you want to go with um, because you can't afford more magnets or aluminium, I'd say go with the Modus, go with the Boke, avoid this one. This is not a good stock. Uh, it is not good for high level play. It's okay for sort of screwing around with maybe, but that weight's gonna get to you, the floppy controllers are gonna annoy you, the lack of shoulder pull's gonna annoy you, you won't be able to use bolt action sniper rifles nearly as well. Um, yeah, I wouldn't buy this one. Um, yeah, definitely get one of the other two, and um, I'll see you next time. <laughs>